Welcome to a series called Spiritual Warfare where we're going through the book of Joshua specifically because the book of Joshua is an historical record of the most significant spiritual war that has ever taken place on this earth. And understanding when you are in the will of God and on the path of God that there's literally nothing, there is no opposition that can stop you as long as you are within the will and on the path of God. And seeing the book of Joshua and understanding exactly what everybody does and what they should do and what they should not do when it comes to spiritual warfare, it's the best way to find your way through. And you're in a spiritual war whether you like it or not. And you can either engage in it as if you know what you're doing or you could just just start flailing and really be easily destroyed by making the wrong moves. And God has made it clear and plain how to navigate a spiritual war in the book of Joshua. And where we are in this book is spies have been sent into Jericho where they are being sought out uh, by the local authorities and they're hidden up on the roof of Rahab's house. Now Rahab is a local Jericho harlot. And we've spent a couple episodes talking about the faith of Rahab is so tremendous. Her faith in a God that she's never seen the miracles of God before. She's only heard of them. And her faith is so incredible and God rewards her so greatly for her faith in Him uh, that she's mentioned multiple times in the Bible and literally David and Jesus Christ are descendants of Rahab the harlot here in Jericho. And this faith is tremendous, and the, this, this faith saves her and saves her family and all of her possessions. But there's something about these spies as well. You know, we said last episode that this is one of the most faith-filled filled conversations in the Bible. Like Everybody involved is fully, 100% confident in God's abilities. And oftentimes when we read stories in the Bible about uh, faith in God, there's always somebody in the room that's... that's saying, yeah, but what about this? Or unfortunately, what about this thing we should be afraid of? Or what about this thing that we shouldn't believe in? But this conversation between the spies and Rahab is filled with so much faith. Um, it, it really needs to at least dedicate a couple episodes to talking about what's going on here. So we spent two episodes talking about Rahab. Now the spies say something that is very peculiar when it comes to navigating spiritual warfare and having a faith-filled life. So we're just going to pick it up where Rahab left off, where she begs them for her family's life. Verse 12, Now therefore, I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. And spare my father, my mother, my brother, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. So the man answered her, our lives for yours, if none of you tell this business of ours, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. So let's just start with the fact that these spies, they're also fully convinced of God's power. They are fully convinced. They know, like, there is nothing about Jericho that is convincing them that God will not give them full victory in this moment. They're fully convinced of it as well. Where it says in 14, our lives for yours, if none of you tell this business of ours, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. They know what the end result is. They also, they're not worried at all. They're fully convinced that when this is over, Jericho is going to fall and they are going to remain victorious, not because they're stronger, not because they have a better plan, because at this point they have no plan. It's because they know that they are God's army. They know that God will give them victory because God said he would. Now, I want to remind you at this point that these spies have been sent to cross the Jordan to spy out the land. This isn't the first time this has happened. When we saw this happen 40 years earlier, the spies reported this in Numbers 13, starting in verse 27. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. 
Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with them said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone is spies as a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. This is a significant difference because the reason that that whole generation had to die and rot in the wilderness for 40 years was because of that, because of that attitude. Most Christians in the world today are more like that. They, they believe in God. Maybe they've seen the miracles of God, but they don't believe in His love. They don't believe in His provision. They don't believe in His protection. They don't believe that He has a warrior's heart. They don't believe that He loves a warrior and that He will fight for warriors. They don't believe any of this. They're just looking at the world and the situation that they're in. And most Christians today are exactly like that. And here in this situation, you have uh, Rahab, who has never witnessed a miracle of God that we're aware of, but yet she's just heard of them. And she's fully convinced, so convinced that she's willing to lay the lives of her family at, their, at the feet of God. She's so convinced of it that she's willing to do that. And then, and as she's doing that, she's having this conversation with spies that are like, you know what? We work for God. He's going to give us victory. He's going to give us victory. Like you're, You guys are in trouble because we work for God. And he's told us that he's going to give us victory. They're all convinced of this victory in the room. They're all convinced. And they're coming from different sides. And when the spies earlier said the land was going to devour them, the reality is, is the land is afraid of them because they're afraid they're going to devour them. The enemy is always more afraid of you than you are of them. This is the kind of heart that we have to have as spiritual warriors, regardless of the situation, regardless of the situation that is in front of you. God is going to get you through if he said he's going to get you through. You have to know that. As long as you are within his will, as long as you are on his path, you will always, always, always have victory starting with the faith to know it's so. And that's exactly what these people are starting with. Everybody that has victory in the next few chapters is fully convinced of the power of God. There is nothing in them. Uh, I, think at that, I think they could have spied out 100,000 giants armed to the teeth in Jericho, and they still would have believed there is no way we're not going to have victory in this situation. Like, there is no way that these Canaanites are going to win. Like, we work for God. Of course we're going to have victory. This is the attitude that Christians need to have and they don't have. But there are a few that do have it. That's all it takes. Just a few. This group of individuals going into Jericho here shortly from the Israelites, these are the remnants. These are the re remaining Israelites, the people of God. While the others died off and rotted in the desert, this is the generation that is ready to go to war and be about their father's business. Love to hear your thoughts on all this. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel to Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. So never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.